from the beginning of time the need for safety was prevalent in man man the prehistoric hunter gatherer in order to save the tribe would not be hesitant to provide his tribe with safety needs of all the safety needs the idea of the abode or home was deeply ingrained in his conscience as evolution brought along with it complex necessities to life this cave became his mansion his arena the butchery and so on the cave was his home that protected him and his family from external elements he was self sufficient consequently man the explorer placed wooden blocks across streams to cross the waters without harm and acquire for the terrestrial these were his first bridges as civilization expanded colonies arose and cities were formed man the initial hunter gatherer was now reflected as civilized his plans were well thought out little by little slowly humanity was gathering momentum concrete became the widespread building ingredient new construction devices such as steam engines machine tools and explosives were made use of plumbing appeared elevators and cranes were invented high rise buildings or skyscrapers were made possible heavy equipment and power tools decreased the amount of human force needed specialized industries were formed and the advancement of industry demanded new professionals architects and quantity surveyors were wanted the need for a professional who could calculate cost loss and damage arose As a result, the quantity surveyor emerged in England at the beginning of the 19th century. Prior to the first recorded usage of the term quantity surveyor in 1859, the terms measurer, custom surveyor, or surveyor were used. In those early days, the quantity surveyor acted for the master tradesman, measuring the work after completion and frequently submitting partisan final accounts to the building owner. As a direct result of these activities, it increasingly became the practice of building owners to have work executed under contract and to call for tenders before any work was undertaken. a procedure therefore developed whereby building owners would approach an architect to design a building drawings and specifications were distributed to selected master builders who would then submit tenders for the total price rather than a collection of prices from master tradesmen the task of arriving at an accurate estimate of cost or tender can be carried out in only one way that of measuring the quantities of all materials and labor necessary to complete the work that is preparing bills of quantities as each builder had to prepare his own bills of quantities for each project they realized that it would be more economical for them as a group to employ one surveyor to measure quantities for them all they would thus share the cost of the surveyor obtain an identical bill of quantities which ensured that they would all be tendering on the same basis the building owner subsequently realized that it would be to his personal advantage to point and pay the fees of the quantity surveyor thus the independent professional quantity surveyor gained consultant status Today, quantity surveyors are the cost engineers of construction. They handle estimating and cost control, the tendering process, and after contract award, the commercial interface. In detail, quantity surveyors should be able to carry out estimating and measurement of construction works prior to tender, producing the bills of quantities, produce tender documentation, and manage the tender process. clarify and evaluate tenders and manage the resultant contract through monthly valuations variations control and assessment of claims
The history of the quantity surveying profession in Sri Lanka dates back to the 19th century. However, it was not until 1965 that the country had the services of professionally qualified Sri Lankans in this field. According to early reports, the Public Works Department, which handled the bulk of building projects in the island, was fortunate to have five quantity surveyors who were all British. Following the departure of the last of these from the department, the country was without the services of professionally qualified quantity surveyors for quite a number of years, and it was left to engineers, architects, building contractors, and sub-technical officers to perform some of the duties of quantity surveyors. With the increasing demand, for professional quantity surveyors, the importance of a professional body to conduct courses, examinations and represent the qualified people in this field seemed a necessity. There were no proper facilities for the education and training of quantity surveyors either in universities or technical colleges. A two-year part-time course called Builders Quantities II conducted by the Department of Examinations was the only course available. But this did not follow the accepted principles of the professional practice of quantity surveying. In 1974, a seminar was held at the BMICH by the Commonwealth Association of Surveying and Land Economy regarding the importance of the construction industry to the social and economic development in Sri Lanka. On behalf of the association, I insist the quantity surveying practitioners to ensure without a delay of proper education and training facilities for all the quantity surveyors. As a result of that, in 1983, the inaugural meeting of the Institute of Quantity Surveys Sri Lanka was held with the participation of six members. An important event took place in 1986 when the Institute of Quantity Surveys Sri Lanka was incorporated as a limited liability company under the Companies Act No. 17 of 1982. Again, the institute was incorporated by Act No. 20 of 2007, which not only conferred the institute the statutory status as a chartered body, but also elevated the institute to the unique position of being the first chartered professional body solely representing the quantity surveying professionals of Sri Lanka. The institute was also acknowledged by international professional bodies such as the Commonwealth Association of Surveying and Land Economy, the Pacific Association of Quantity Surveyors and the International Coast Engineering Council. The institute also holds reciprocity agreement with the Australian Institute of Quantity Surveyors for the benefit of the members of both professional bodies. As expressly described in the Act No. 20, 2007, one of the primary objectives of the Institute of Quantity Surveyors is dissemination and imparting of knowledge on quantity surveying and related subjects through educational programs. In order to achieve this objective, in 2005, the Institute of Quantity Surveyors Sri Lanka established its education division the College of Quantity Surveying, which is entirely dedicated for the study and practice of QS. IQSSL forms its education division, the College of Quantity Surveyors. This step, which was taken by the IQSSL, was a massive leap forward towards establishing a professional body in quantity surveying, which is capable of fulfilling requirements of both the local and foreign markets. In the beginning, there were only eight students. Since the lack of facilities, the classes were held at Coast Consultancy Services Building, few hired places like Institute of Engineers and sometimes at OPA Building. In 2009, 
the college moved to a new facility at Narayan Peter with the intention of widening the student base with modern educational requirements. The college has already developed several courses of study for the benefit of those who wish to pursue higher education and practice in quantity surveying. With the objective of reaching a wider area of study, the entire program is conducted in English language. The college conducts a well-structured series of lectures for students two semesters per year. In addition to these classroom lectures, the college organizes induction programs, refresher courses, seminars, study groups, and group discussions with the goal to update and facilitate students to gain better exposure in practicing quantity surveying. The foundation course has been specially designed for school leavers who wish to start off their profession as quantity surveyors. It methodically leads the student to complete the professional education with three consecutive levels. After the successful completion of the foundation course, the student enters to the level 1, level 2 and level 3 and obtains a technical membership. This path is specially designed to achieve the chartered title in lesser period of time. The course structure is designed to impart core and peripheral skills pertaining to quantity surveying in the fields of technology, management, economics, dispute resolution and information technology. In all the above stages, the student will be assisted and guided by a team of professionally qualified QS practitioners. Separate tutorial assistance is provided for the students who wish to pursue further QS education. The college is equipped with a cordial academic staff specially selected from senior qualified industry professionals and university academia. The combination of best industry practices with experience and university level education standards provide an excellent blend of learning environment at the college for students pursuing QS education. The College of Quantity Surveying is the only educational institute in Sri Lanka dedicated entirely for the study of quantity surveying. The college currently holds 225 student population. We warmly extend a welcome hand to body QS professionals. Come, join us. Secure yourselves with a solid education from the industry professionals in an academically stimulating environment.